What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Mind Something. If you're new here, my name is Jake and in today's video we're going to talk about AMD 7000 series might be really good at core algos and we're going to talk about why. Also, there's a big change coming to Casper in the near future and could this give a temporary advantage to GPU miners? We're going to talk about that. Also, how does Radiance difficulty work? And then lastly, I'd like to do another giveaway. We're getting really close to 2,000 subscribers, and I think it's about time for another giveaway, so stay tuned to the end for that. So I wanted to look at the solar array today before we get into talking about uh, some issues that I potentially see happening with tariffs. And right now, the solar array is producing... Oh, I'd say somewhere between 20 to 27 kilowatt hours a day. Right now we're sitting at 7.4. It's only about 11.30 a.m. where I'm at. And yesterday we got up to roughly about 4,100, 4,200 watts at peak. And I'm noticing that my peaks are getting a little bit lower uh, as time goes by. I'm not sure if that has more to do with the position of the sun in the sky or is it time to get up there and start cleaning my solar panels. But we're going to go ahead and clean them probably sometime in the near future and I will let you guys know if that makes any difference. But speaking of solar panels, I noticed something from Reuters, an article saying that the U.S. to expand solar panel tariffs after a probe finds some bad information. Uh, but prior to that, back in June, also from Reuters, there was another article saying that Biden to waive tariffs for 24 months on solar panels. So let's take a look at this first article. This says, President Joe Biden will declare a 24-month tariff exemption on Monday for solar panels from Southeast Asia nations after an investigation froze imports and stalled projects in the United States. The move comes amid concerns about the impact of the Commerce Department's month-long investigation into whether imports of solar panels from Cambodia, Malaysia, Thailand, and Vietnam are circumventing tariffs on goods made in China. So, if we take a look at the latest article, it, it pretty much doesn't change anything, and I'll explain why. So the United States will impose new duties on imports from some major Chinese solar panel makers after a month-long investigation found they were trying to dodge tariffs by finishing their products in Southeast Asia countries, trade officials said on Friday. The pre preliminary decision was bad news for U.S. solar project developers that rely on cheap imports to fuel their growth, but fell short of the industry's worst fears that Washington would impose new tariffs to cover all solar shipments from the region instead of just those from specific companies. The U.S. Commerce Department probe found that units of BYD company LTD, Trina Solar, Longley, Longy Green Energy, and Canadian Solar were circumventing existing tariffs on Chinese solar cells and panels that have been in place for a decade. It finalized next year, or excuse me, if finalized next year, the determination means these companies will be subject to duties on the products they made in Malaysia, Cambodia, Thailand, and Vietnam, countries that now account for about 80% of U.S. solar panel supplies. The companies and others will face the same duty rates the United States already assesses on their Chinese-made products, officials said. Nothing that most of these rates are below 35%, noting that 35%. The duties will not kick in until June of 2024, thanks to a two-year waiver from Biden earlier this year. So uh, this is kind of a non-issue article. I mean, we already knew there was a 24-month extension, and this just confirms that it's getting pushed out to 2024. So I don't know <laughs> why, why, why they're updating us on something we already knew. But in case you guys didn't know, you know, now maybe the right time to purchase solar if you were looking at doing so. 
And for those of you out there who are considering it and haven't seen my previous videos, I do have a bunch of videos talking about everything that I purchased. But if you're looking for inexpensive solar panels, um, I purchased mine from Santan Solar. I think they have two different locations. One's in Georgia and the other one's in Arizona. And the ones that I got were these Canadian solar panel 255 watt, watts. Now they're listed at $79. Uh, I believe I talked them down to $54 per panel. I also didn't have to pay for shipping because I was fortunate enough to have uh, a friend and coworker who is traveling to Arizona with a trailer and was able to pick these up and bring them back for me. Now they do have uh, another version of, of these Canadian solar panels that have snail trails for, I think, just slightly cheaper. These say scratched vinyl. I don't recommend getting scratched vinyl. You don't want to deal with that. Uh, but snail trails, they're as far as affecting the output of the panel, it's minuscule and it's not like the vinyl cracking where you could potentially ruin an entire panel if condensation or moisture gets in there. Snail trails are, are more or less kind of a, a, a cosmetic blemish instead of something that affects the performance. Anyways, they got a lot of different options in here. I personally tried to go with the lowest cost per watt, which was the Canadian solar panels. But depending on your circumstances, like let's say, for instance, you have a, a smaller surface area and you can only put up 10 solar panels. Well, you may want to go for something that does a much higher wattage as opposed to something that has lower wattage, but a better price per watt, if that makes sense. Anyways, th these guys are really good. They hooked me up with some good panels. The ones that I technically ordered were the ones that had the snail trails, but they wind up sending me some that were flawless. So everything's working good so far. Anyways, let's move on to the next topic, which is AMD and their compute units for core algorithms may be a lot better than I suspected. So if you guys aren't familiar with my TPA spreadsheet or my uh, predictions on 4,000 and 7,000 series hash rates, just to take a look at this again real quick. So these numbers were all based off of what I was getting from Tech Power Up, and some of these numbers were incorrect, specifically the uh, base clocks and boost clocks. And after you know, they finally released specs and I wasn't looking at leaked information. Um, I was quite disappointed and my expectations for the 7000 series was getting worse by the day. However, I have some good news. This may be a really good thing for core algorithms. It might affect memory intensive algorithms as well. But I'm going to play just a small tidbit here from a video from GamerMeld and just listen to what he says about the compute units. And lastly for today, AMD's RX 7000 series is way better than you think. In a recent story, I discussed a submission by AMD to their open source ROCM repository. In it, we got specs for their Navi 32 GPU, which would be their RX 7800 XT. Not only that, but now... Navi 33 was also mentioned, but I'll get to that in a second. The big thing today comes from a discussion of those cores. According to the leak, their Navi 32 part comes in 60 CUs or compute units, which doesn't sound like much, especially given the 6800 XT that it would be replacing has 72. But there's something I don't think many people know. In RDNA 3, AMD now uses dual issue stream processors or two instructions per cycle, both of which can run floating point or integer calculations. So theoretically, it has 128 or double the shaders per compute unit. But because those ALUs share the same resources that they did with only 64 shaders, you won't see a doubling of performance. This is similar to what NVIDIA did with their Ampere architecture. It's how they got so many more cores, yet the performance didn't perfectly scale like it has in the past. So it looks like RDNA 3 doesn't have that many cores, but it's way better than it looks. Tom's Hardware actually asked AMD's chief GPU architect, Mike Mantor, about this. And even according to him, RDNA 3 technically has double the cores or shader units per CU as they did with RDNA 2. Now, he did say that in some ways it doesn't, but it's likely because you won't get double the performance since the resources are shared. Anyway, so you won't get double the performance 
but there's a really good chance that we're we're le- at least looking at maybe a 20% increase from expectations previously, which may be enough uh, to make it excellent for core intensive algorithms. So going back to my uh, little, we'll say predictions here on the 7000 series. So obviously ETH hash is not a core intensive algorithm, but If you take a look at where we were at on, let's say for instance, like a 7800 XT coming in at 83 mega hash at about 180 watts, which is a 0.46 efficiency. If we get a 20% increase in something like Caspa or Radiant um, and our efficiency goes even higher, then if you compare that to what we're getting out of the 6000 series and the 4,000, or excuse me, the 6,000 and the 3,000 series, it, it could be significant and, and maybe enough to sway my opinion on whether or not the 7,000 series is going to be great at mining. Anyways, moving on, let's talk about Radiant and their difficulty. So just a something that I noticed when looking at, uh, I don't know if this was minor stats or, yeah, I think it was minor stats. So when you compare the network hash rate chart to the network difficulty chart, maybe, there we go. You'll notice we had a gigantic spike in hash rate around this time back in September, but the difficulty does not reflect where we got to as far as hash rate is concerned we are currently exceeding the highest difficulty that we've had so far on Radiant, even though the hash rate is not the same as it was in this chart. So it just kind of poked my interest and made me ask the question, I'll just read it off to you, was just looking for clarity on how difficulty is calculated specifically on Radiant. As you can see, difficulty is at an all-time high, although hash rate is lower than the previous spike. And thank you to Art of Satoshi who responded and says that they Radiant uses a cert DAA, and I'll, I'll leave a link for this so you guys can study that in depth. But let me just you know read what he replied with here. From what I can tell, it rewards consistent miners, which means we have more coins, more core miners that stay on network versus transient to eliminate periodic oscillations in difficulty and hash rate. To reduce the difference in profitability between steady miners and those who switch to mining other blockchains. To maintain average block intervals close to the 10 minute target. To bring the average transaction confirmation time close to target time. Ours is 5 minutes of course, but the same applies. Does not allow large hashers the same ability to leave, drop the difficulty, and then jump back in and profits just the same. So better for stability. And I agree. I think that uh, I'm, I'm, I'm extremely pleased to see something like this where we don't have to worry about issues like we had to worry about with Ergo. Um, however, I'm still a little sad the difficulty is so high. Anyways, moving on. Let's talk about Caspa uh, and the changes that are coming. So... We talked about Dagnite in the previous video and what it means. And one thing that just popped into my brain and I had to ask the question, is it remotely possible that FPGAs will need a new bitstream once Dagnite is implemented? And keep in mind, the reason I'm asking this question is because this is a hard fork and i you know, I don't know. I am certainly no experts in bitstreams and FPGAs. Uh, I also asked Son of a Tech th- this question, and he replied that it is it is possible that there will need to be a new bitstream. And thank you to Almost Immortal for replying that I would imagine so. Yeah, nothing a firmware update couldn't solve, though I don't think. And if there has to be a new bitstream once they switch to Dagnite. This could be a massive opportunity for you guys that are A, watching this channel 
and be ready to take advantage because if all of the FPGAs fall off simultaneously, that's when you need to swoop in there and put all of your hash rate towards it. I don't know if it'd be worth solo mining. Of course, it depends on a couple of things. A, the size of your farm, and B, uh, whether or not you're running your own node. I think that's kind of a must if you're going to solo mine with Casper. It tremendously helps. But I would like to be prepared for when this happens. So, of course, I'm asking the question, you know, when could it happen? So I tweeted at uh, Casper Currency, when Dagnite is deployed, will the Rust rewrite happen before or during its launch? And then what kind of soft date or time frame will this happen? Will FPGA miners need a new bitstream? So hopefully we get a reply to this sometime in the near future, and I will keep you guys updated. And it could be an opportunity to collect a lot of Caspa in a very short amount of time, but... Now, I don't I don't know when Dagnite is coming, guys, so we'll just have to wait until we get that answer. Okay, so the last thing I wanted to talk to you guys about is a giveaway. I'd like to do another one to show my appreciation. You guys that are OGs to the channel, I really appreciate it. And if you guys have been paying attention, you probably know at this point, I've been covering things way sooner than a lot of the other YouTubers. And a lot of the other YouTubers are not paying attention anymore and for understandable reasons right you know in the crypto bear market it gets really tough and hard on everyone and you know that just turns into pessimism and and lack of interest and for those of you guys who are still in the space and you're paying attention and you appreciate the content that i'm putting out i would like to say thank you and give back to you guys in any way that i can i also love transparency i like to see behind the scenes peek behind the curtain, so to speak. And I just wanted to share some stuff with you guys. So first of all, we are sitting at close to 2000 subscribers. It shows 2000 here. Uh, but if you look at my channel page, it's only going to show 1960 ish. And I would like to hit 3000 as quickly as possible. Now, one thing that I've noticed, a lot of other YouTubers who started their channel before we got to the merge have way more subscribers than I do with, uh, how do I put this nicely? With a lot less important content. And I think the main reason for that is simply because they got in while there was still a lot of people searching for this type of content and now the crowd has thinned out and only the true believers are still left here which is you guys and as you can see i have finally monetized the channel since monetizing maybe about a week week and a half ago we're sitting at about 65 bucks which is awesome but uh I want to keep it going and I really need y'all's help. So for those of you who are watching this particular video right now, you've watched a couple of the videos, you've hit the like button, you've maybe even commented, but you haven't subscribed yet. Come on, man. What are you doing? Why are you waiting? Just, just take the plunge, hit that button, subscribe to the channel and help support me because I'm going to keep supporting you guys. I'm going to keep bringing you the content that nobody else is bringing you, and I'm going to bring it to you a lot faster. We've been making videos every single day, and I'd like to do a large giveaway this time when we hit 3,000. I don't know exactly what the giveaway is going to be yet, but leave a comment down below. What, what kind of giveaway would you like to see? Anyways, that's all I got for this video today, guys. Really appreciate it. Hit the like, hit the subscribe, and I will see you guys on the next one. For those of you guys who stuck around, one last thing I wanted to add in regards to the Caspa FPGA Dag Knight situation. Uh, our dear friend Iota Pie uh, did mention to me that if there is a new bitstream required for FPGAs, then that most likely means that the miners or the developers will have to update the miners as well. So I don't know, hopefully we can outrun the development on FPGAs, but I guess time will tell. Just be ready. Thanks, guys.